Hi, my name is Nilaus, and this is another little uh, automation in Factorio. Again, we are going to look at an automatic uh, deployer of solar panels and accumulators. The, I have uh, another video that I'm linking in the description where I have created something along the same lines as this that is moving along with the solar panel. However, during the work on that, I was inspired to take another approach in which uh, the control center here stays in the same position and continues to deploy in a continuously widening area. Now I will uh, split this video into three parts. First, the intro, what we've done now. Then I will fire it off so we can have a go at it. And then lastly, I'll walk through the mechanics of it. It looks rather complicated or it looks rather simple, depends on how familiar you are with combinators, but it actually has, um, it, it's pretty, pretty easy to explain, I think. At least that's uh, what I'm going to try. However, the concept of this, oh, thank you, Autosave, that was what I needed, is that it will deploy a blueprint such as this. This is one robot port big. It has a little radar. I know that's overkill to put radars in everyone, but I, uh, I'll i do it anyway. Now, all I need to do is actually place this in here, and the rest, as they say, is history. You'll see that the robots are gradually spread spanning out here, deploying this area, but they're only deploying this small area. So once that's done, the robots will go back, and as soon as they're idle, or at least as soon as they report back to their home base for charging, the next one will be deployed, but only once that takes place. So you can see here, once it spams out, and it's then ready, then the next one will be thrown out. Of course, there's still going to be a lot of robots that are charging, but that's uh, still counted as being available. It will now, and this is what I've designed, it will now only create three. And the reason is the, for it only to create three, even though all of the robots are available, is, and I'll show you, we have some green lights over here. Have some green lights. These are, let's go down to the little explainer down here where I have put markers. I will of course share blueprints uh, for all of these. So you can see here, this one lighting up each green light for each of the components that is available and is needed for stamping down your blueprint. So if either of them is not sufficiently in the logistics network, it will not turn green and it will therefore not start. You can see, we go up to the one that is executing this one. This inserter will only work when there are six green signals. That means everything is available. So all I need to do is put in more radars and it will immediately deploy. We zoom out again. So we get the full overview, and here it is. So once another feature of this is actually at the point that is now created for. So I don't want it to be just spamming out continuously in one row. I actually want it to create a matrix. So this is actually one where it starts getting a bit slower because there's a lot bigger travel distance over to this location. So a lot of them are down here. Uh, once they are charged, these will probably defect before they get there. Yep, they will. But Gradually, we will fill up this one. What we should be mindful of or take note of is what will happen after this one is filled out. Let's keep an eye on the number of construction robots available because the part is that once this hits, then available is equal to the total. So it hits 27, 29. Then the next one will be deployed. And that should be now. You can see up here, I'll deploy. In this case, I'll actually deploy a bit too many, I think. It will deploy these because there are enough materials to actually deploy them. And now it will start spamming them so that it can fill them up. And that's going to take some time. The interesting thing is, well, let's just keep running because now I will go down to the little explainer and explain what's going on. I'll leave it running. Why not? Let's go down to this area and explain. So there are several different components of this little control center and I'll walk through each of them. We did briefly touch upon this area. This area is checking, do we have enough for another iteration? If we do have enough for an iteration, it sends a signal over to the main sequence of the program. Let's call it that. This is the main sequence. First, I am requesting a blueprint. I have of course disabled this, otherwise there would be a chance that it would flow to this one. But this one is requesting a blueprint, so make sure you only have one blueprint in uh, the logistics network that's flowing around. So the next one, this is the one that says this will only enable a new run of the program if 
there are six green signals corresponding to insert when enough is in logistics red logistics network green equal to six then it goes into this one this is the blueprint deployer this gets a signal this gets a signal from where where does it get a signal from it gets a signal from up here now this is the important part this is the core part of the program you will have an x and a y coordinate up here these are the coordinates of if we look at the blueprint oops not this blueprint but yeah, the blueprint that's in progress. The blueprint in progress, the way that this works is this anchor will be, uh, is a wooden chest because they're not going to be used. So the blueprint has a wooden chest and I'm indicating the location where it should stamp down the blue chest, the wooden chest of the blueprint, which is the top left hand corner. Now that is something I put in here from these X and Y coordinates that we will go through how these are calculated. Maybe we should do that now actually. So what happens is that it starts at a coordinate. The coordinate, it comes from down here. This is a start coordinate 11 X corresponding to from this location, 11 this direction and the other coordinate minus 65. That is for some reason, minus is upwards. Now that means this is the starting location for the first blueprint. And once, once the first blueprint is done, it will go to the next one. So as soon as it inserted, this one triggers only when there is a blueprint. So it has to make sure that there is identified that there's a blueprint in here, and then it will trigger. This is quite important. Okay. Hello. Thank you for dropping by for a bit of a charge and oh yeah, they're busy. They're very busy. That's great. We'll see at the end, how far it has gotten in the meantime. Now, then this one will uh, move. What it also will do is send a red signal because it has read hand content. So it sends a red signal over to what is probably the most complicated part of this engine. This one is basically a memory cell. This keeps track of how many blueprints I've stamped because it, it will increment every time here. So it goes in and if it's greater than zero, it will loop over and store the total number. This is what is being output in this cell. We can go up here and have a look at the other one to see how many iterations, 11 iterations. Those 11 iterations are then needed to calculate the X and Y offset. The Y offset, let's start with that because for some reason that's easier. That comes out here. This is the number. Then we have this. This is an input where you say how many, how many next to each other on the X axis. So let's say, let's uh, say, one, two, three, four, before it starts going to the next line like this, like this, right? Um, yeah, I don't know if I should use blue. Yeah, I'll just do it. So in this case, I've set it to four. That means it goes four wide and starts a new row on top. That is fed into here. This takes the number of blueprints, which is our memory, divides by four in this case, and I'll put it as A. This goes into this one where it says basically for every A, you multiply by minus 50 because the offset will then be minus 50. This is basically saying you go 200 for each four, four blueprints, you skip one lane up. Very simple. And then the offset is then calculated here and output to Y, which goes into this signal and is combined with the signal from the original position. And that gives in my case, minus five minus 65 in the case of the other one where it's been running for a while it is the y coordinate is minus 215 so it has moved up quite a bit now the x coordinate is actually slightly more difficult what it does is first it takes the input here the 11 nope it takes this number and the a and then it starts calculates them together. That means this is basically one, two, three, four. Then it, as it is starting the next one, I need to make sure that I count how many have already been deployed in the previous full rows. That is what this one does. And then I, in the next one, I subtract the total number, the 11, for example, minus two times eight or two times four, eight. That means I have three next left and the three comes in here multiplied by 50 that is the x offset so in this case it'd be like that technically it would be like this right so that would be this would be the first calculation 
The second calculation would be all of this minus this part, giving three, and that's what is fed into this one and gives the X offset. I don't know if that makes sense, but have a look at it yourself. Uh, that means what happens is that every time I have deployed it, it increments one, it changes the offset. You can have as many wide as you like, just change this number. What else goes on then? It goes into a storage chest, a buffer chest, where it's just parked. Insert, the blueprint is deployed. Yes, that is this step. Then the buffer, wait until for restart. And this one is checking the set equal T from the robot port. You can see I have two robot ports. This is important. One robot port is monitoring the logistics content that's set down here. The other one is monitoring the robots. You can see output available equals total. And then it goes into the, uh, the provider test and makes it available for another cycle. And that basically explains everything that's going on here. The one thing that isn't explained is a reset button. I have been testing this quite a lot. So it's important to have a reset button. Let's have a look at how, oh yeah, thanks how to save. That means 10 minutes has passed and I should start wrapping this up. We can look at the 16 have now been deployed and I think it's time for us to zoom out and see what's going on. Look at how efficient this is. It's just going on while I'm chatting away. It has deployed, I don't know how many that is, but a number of thousand loop, uh, thousands of these. And that's basically it. This from Once you have this teeny tiny little thing, you can configure it as you like. You can also make it go in other directions. That requires a minuscule amount of, of changing here. You will have something that will, as long as you feed things into the, the network logistics network, you will always be able to, uh, to you, you will never ever have to get do this again. Well, with the exception of uh, landfill and aliens, but we'll, we'll, we'll make an advanced version that clears the path for, for forest and aliens. And if anyone knows a way to uh, deploy landfill, we'll also do that. Now I have stopped it because I picked up the blueprint. You can see the blueprint here. It deploys, it's not a blueprint, big blueprint, but it uh, it's, it's pretty efficient, let's say. Now, let's try the blueprint, the, uh, the reset button. The reset button is using a small mod. You can see a push button. What it does is when you press it with the F key, it sends a one tick signal to the network. And this is a signal of minus 1000, which will reset this one. And there's reset. And then it will start over from scratch. Very convenient as you're testing. So that's it. This is um, my new way of doing uh, doing solar de solar power deployment. I think it's actually a bit nicer and crisper than the previous one, but I really wanted to make a glider that could uh, that could move along. But this is much uh, much more controlled. So uh, anyway, there there are now two options available for how to do automatic solar panels. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, then leave a comment or like. You can also check out my other campaigns. I hope you like those. I will be starting another one when 015 comes out, obviously, like uh, I guess everyone else. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you sometime, some other time and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.